In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And happy Easter. As we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter and Divine Mercy Sunday, let us begin by calling upon God's mercy that heals our souls. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call sinners back to yourself. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are a hope of glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet, more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, who sends you forgive are forgiven them, and who sends you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
on this second Sunday of, of Easter, you know, I was wondering, thinking to myself, you know, probably all of us uh, have in one way or another experience, been to a funeral, experienced funerals and the, the death of loved ones, but probably none of us have had the experience of having the funeral and the burial, and then sometime later seeing the person uh, coming back to, to our home that we buried a few weeks earlier. Which made me ask, the, think of the question, you know, our proclamation that Jesus has risen from the dead is really incredible, unbelievable. It, it's perfectly understandable why, why there will be people that don't, wouldn't believe it. But in fact, we know that millions, many millions, billions have believed it over the years. And so we should ask ourselves why. Why would anyone believe such an incredible proclamation? And I think the answer is this. While what the apostles proclaim, he is risen, was, yes, incredible, the impact of Christ on their lives was undeniable. You see, sometimes words aren't enough. I mean, I sympathize with, with Thomas, and probably some of you do too. When your heart is broken, words are not enough. People need to see something. The people who, again, who professed that he was alive, they had to say more than talk about it. You know, it says that a week later, Jesus showed up again. But clearly, in the beginning, they told Thomas, he's risen. And he said, this is too incredible. I can't believe it. I, I won't believe it unless I see it. And over that week, he still didn't see Jesus, but he did see them. And he had, when, he, when he knew Christ was, well, had been crucified, he left the community. And how many have made that mistake? Their hearts are broken, scandal, whatever, and they said, I'm done, and they walked away from the body of Christ. They walked away. Even though where two or three are gathered in their name, Jesus shows up. It says there were many other things that Jesus did in the presence of the disciples. Don't let what life scandals, suffering, pain, whatever, heartbreak, chase you away. He always shows up when we come together. But apparently, as they told him all week, saying, Thomas, he's alive, Thomas, he's alive, Thomas, we saw him. He came back to the community, and sure enough, Jesus showed up. May we understand, may, while what we say to people even today may seem just too good to be true, too incredible, may the impact we allow the risen Christ to have on our lives be so, uh, so impactful that they will not deny, they cannot deny that He has made the most profound difference in our lives that could ever be made. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us ask God, our Father, for all the needs of the church and world, conscious that faith is one of the special gifts of the Holy Spirit. For the church and her leaders, may she continue to be guided and remain open to the Holy Spirit, who is alive and active in our church and world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, may we be witnesses to the power of divine mercy working within us for the good of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an openness to life within the sacrament of marriage and an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent diaconate. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of all people, may the saving power of Jesus Christ be taught so everyone may come to believe in the risen Lord who gives eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you sent the Holy Spirit among us through his power. We make our prayers to you, trusting you will answer them through Christ our Lord. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on at this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who was taken, who was taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died. In your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs for eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. Through your mercy keep us free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be here.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. For a final blessing, I'd just like to again on this Divine Mercy Sunday, in a special way, uh, you know, I'm reminded of the words of Pope Francis who said, God does not tire in forgiving us. We just get tired of asking. Don't make that mistake. God is the ocean with no bottom. There's mercy available for us. We simply have to be open to receive it. Uh, I'd like to thank all those who make this Mass possible, especially here at the Basilica of the, of the, of the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception, all the uh, camera people who make it possible for you to see me and uh, to, to participate uh, in this Mass uh, together. Of course, all those, who, again, who broadcast it. So again, thank you. Continue to uh, remember, Christ is risen. Truly, He is risen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. God. If you cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly. To help support the TV Mass from the Basilica, call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilica tv mass. My Catholic faith is the center of our family life. We really strive to bring up our kids in the faith. We live within one of the Pueblo reservations within northern New Mexico. We have always valued our cultural beliefs, both Hispanic and Native American. I think Knights of Columbus has really strengthened his faith, which leads to him being able to lead his family through his vocation as a father. The Knights of Columbus helps me to be a better father, husband, by helping me to lead by example. I want to help people to find their way into the church and live the lives that God intends them to live. And being a knight has helped me to do that, and it helps me to help others do that as well.